couple of takeaways before we close. Number one, I mean, hate does not discriminate. I mean, whether you are a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, whether you're atheist, whether you're Buddhist, no, hate is hate. Hate is not a discriminator of race, religion, gender, whatever categories you we use to define ourselves. All of us are are vulnerable to hate and hate crimes. And so this Muslim community is no different right now. They're going through some serious pain. If you heard, you know what the Imam was saying. The other thing is that stories are so powerful. God uses stories to to just break down barriers of prejudice, hate, all of that stuff. Here's a challenge for you. Is there a person, is there a type of person that you don't want to associate with, that you're like, that you already decided that you're not going to talk to them, that you're not going to hang out with them? Go out of your way to actually initiate a conversation with somebody that you've already recognized and already determined in your mind that they are somehow less than you for, for whatever reason. Have a conversation with them, have a meal with them. If you are a reasonable person, if you are a person who is somewhat concerned about the well-being of other people, I dare you to tell me that the hate did not diminish, that prejudice did not lower, that that anxiety and animosity towards the other did not reduce. I dare you. It happens all the time. Man. I wasn't thinking about going and doing something like this until I read this thing on the internet about the incident. This dude used the Bible to justify his claim that Muslims were fanatics, that Muslims were evil, that Muslims were bad, that Muslims were all of that stuff. It's kind of crazy, you know, how if we don't see the Bible for what it is, that it is a story that reveals the heart of God for us, how quickly we can weaponize it and use that to bludgeon people into death, literally death. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, he's talking about how, you know, Muslims have been the cause of so many deaths. Yo, like we Christians don't have a good track record. Look at the look at the history of Christianity. Look at how much blood we have shed. In the name of God, like the Crusades, just Google the Crusades and see how many people Christians have killed in the name of God, in the name of purity. It's absolutely insane. So that just makes me mad, man. That makes me mad. And it gives more reason for people to, to let go of religion, let go of faith altogether. He, here's the thing, when people say that they have left organized religion or they have left the faith or whatever, um, my next question is why, obviously. And then when they explain to me the reasons, let me tell you, more often than not, if I were to go through the same experiences that they've gone through as to why they left, I would have left in a heartbeat. I would have left church in a heartbeat. I would have left religion in a heartbeat. I mean, it's absolutely, terrible to see like what a church member or a pastor or an elder or somebody who they have looked up to as a, as a spiritual giant has done to them you know it is evil straight up evil the, the stuff that so-called followers of jesus so-called followers of god have done absolutely evil that type of religion should be rejected with haste ah but anyhow, you know, uh, I think I'm losing space on my card. So, uh, yeah, if you like this video, feel free to, you know, like, share, subscribe, whatever, you know, do what you need to do. But the biggest thing is, honestly, I don't, you know, even, even if you don't do any of that stuff, just spend some time in prayer, thinking about the Muslim community right now. These are actual real people with real lives, with real stories. They're not the other. Um, they are your neighbor. So, yeah, this is Kevin. Signing out, helping you bridge the gap between your life and the good life. Take care and God bless.